Western Victoria. We're going to go there now. Farmers up in arms about the Albanese government's plan to carve up some of Australia's most fertile agricultural land with thousands of kilometres of transmission lines required to connect new solar and wind projects to the grid. In submissions to government, farmers have warned that these transmission lines will damage their properties, constrain their ability to farm and manage livestock and reduce their land values. Some have even been told that along each side of the transmission line, there'll be a 35 to 50 metre exclusion zone in which they won't be able to farm, spray or even kill weeds. There's also concerns about bushfire risk, given these pylons are as tall as the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Farmers made their way to Canberra today, but they were given short shrift by the minister. Now, I've invited them on the show tonight, though, so you can understand what's really going on on the ground with the government's massive renewables push. Joining me now, Dr Anne Webster, the Nationals MP for the Victorian seat of Mallee. That's right across the western part of Victoria. And a seventh generation farmer, Glendon Watts. Dr Webster, Glendon Watts, welcome to the program. Anne Webster, I listened very carefully to your question today in the chamber to the Minister Chris Bowen. And I want to play a little bit for my audience, given his uh, pretty arrogant response. Thank you uh, very much, Mr Speaker. I thank the Honourable Member for her question, but say to her and the House it would have been better if that question was more anchored in the facts. And the facts are the matter. The fact of the Order. I would have thought, knowing there are farmers in the gallery, you might have got a more reasonable response from him. You want an inquiry. What's your concern? The concern is that this has been a rushed um, climate change action. As soon as Labor got in, they wanted to uh, ensure that the transmission grid was going to be able to take all the renewables. Um, the evidence would show at this stage that proper consultation has not taken place and uh, even the ISPs that AEMO have been using to justify these projects are uh, really held in question. And there are independent professors who uh, can definitely talk you through the facts. And it's deeply concerning to mm. many, many shires across my electorate that this is being pushed through with ministerial orders, no questions being asked, and uh, people just need to suck it up and uh, accept it. Well, we say that's not good enough. Glennon, your farm's just south of Charlton. I know the area well. I grew up in Witchy Proof, just north of you. Uh, you're a seventh generation farmer. You're obviously involved in your local community. Give us a sense of what it's like for you in relation to your own land, but what people locally are saying about this uh, transmission line. I think that um, there's a lot of unknown, which is probably one of the hardest things. A lot of bulldozing, a lot of railroading. We, we don't know. AMO continue to neglect to come to the community meetings, to the forums, to give us information. Um, you know, they're very quick to change their roots. And with that comes fear, comes the unknown. Um, you know, people don't know what to expect. They don't know what they can and can't do around these transmission lines. We don't know the effects it's going to have on our, uh, our business, our land prices. So a lot of fear, a lot of um, mental you know, I guess the starts of mental illness and um, afraid of the future, the, the unknown is pretty, it's devastating and uh, it's affecting a lot of people. So it's, it's not great. As good as the community is, as strong as we are, it's really having some detrimental effects. I bet it is. I mean, and what's wrong with this government? We're not getting information about the voice. We're not getting information about this transmission line. Uh, I'll, I'll do a comparison with the one that's going to come off snowy 2.0. It's 360 kilometres. This one's a hell of a lot bigger. That's going to cost us upwards of $8 billion. What's the cost here and why aren't we getting enough consultation? The, um, the cost is, at this stage, we've been told it's $3.2 billion uh, for this particular section of the transmission grid. But as I said earlier, the experts are saying it will be far more than that. The 500,000 volt wires have not been included in the quotation. Uh, and the social cost uh, is, is devastating to the communities who have farmed here for generations, just like Glendon. Glendon, what do you want to see the government do? What sort of action do you want? 
I think the, the most obvious thing is at the situation or the, the time we are now is for the Senate inquiry. Um, within reason, the damage is done. I think um, they're, they're flirting with um, dictatorship almost, that there's not a democracy here, that the Labor government is just push, 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 mysterial, mysterial orders, trying to rush this thing through as quick as they can, not taking into consideration the effects, the environment, the social effects, not even the costings, as Anne's pointed out. There's independent professors who have kind of almost screaming blue murder over what AMO are presenting in that it's not true, it's not correct, it's false, that there's alternatives with less mm. impact in every aspect. So I want to see a Senate inquiry. I want to see AMO and the Labor government answer some questions. Yep. I guess my concern with all this too, Anne, is, is the, the next sort of battery ram in this uh, climate war is going to be our farmers, it's our agricultural communities. And now we've got these transmission lines going in, of course, but then we're going to have all the emissions that come on anyone who's got livestock. We've, we've already seen some of that action taken overseas, particularly in places like New Zealand. We've seen the reaction to it, particularly from farmers in Europe. They're not having a bar of it. Um, it's hard for people on the land, isn't it? It's uh, incredibly hard. Today we had around 60 to 70 farmers in the house. I was extremely proud of that, that so many people uh, left their seeding after all the rain and came to Canberra because they feel so passionately about this. The pressure that this government is putting on agriculture is just profound. And I don't think they realise that in the midst of cost of living pressures, they're about to put food sources up and uh, the pressure for people at the checkout will be felt in due course. So this is going to mm. impact everybody. This is not just farmers in Mali. This is everybody. What's your likelihood, Anne, of getting the Senate inquiry up? Look, we're pushing hard. Uh, we've, had, we've got three attempts. It should be uh, being debated tonight in the Senate. Uh, we have had farmers going to see the crossbench, trying to encourage the crossbench crossbench that this is in everybody's interest to have the transparency to have the government answer questions to have AEMO answer questions is in everybody's interest why would we want to invest in something that is from these uh, independent professors view is actually a monumental mm. mistake that is the terminology they're using so uh, this is important the senate inquiry needs to happen and if it doesn't get up this time we will continue trying the Nats have committed to our farmers across Australia that we will uh, continue to push the Senate inquiry.